we will have more than one talk on lecture. Even just focus on main basin, the main basin, I often feel it's uh, difficult to put all valuable information in one story. So today, my talk uh, will build on all the fishery data from uh, uh, Lake, Lake Huron Technical Community and the major modeling work uh, from modeling subcommittee of uh, 1838 Treaty Water and our uh, spring survey, gillnetting survey in U.S. water. So the estimate uh, stock biomass uh, has been stable since uh, 2002. And uh, this stability at population level actually involves substantial change in individual growth, body condition, and the age composition of the population. And uh, given the recent change in the food web, one consideration may be, oh, the population may be close to the carrying capacity of the lake. But as you can see, the re real balance right now, the current balance, is uh, between the decline in hatchery fish and the increase in wild fish. How this can happen, of course, uh, before 2003, major dye of lake chow are air wife and the rainbow smell, and uh, recently the major dye are rainbow smell and the gobi. This slide shows the spawning stock biomass. You can see spawning biomass, uh, stock biomass uh, has been slowly increased. The implication is that uh, the mortality of adult fish is low enough. Decline of the uh, hatchery spawning biomass is uh, slow enough. Then you add the recent well recruitment to the spawning stock then uh, you see continued increase. You can see the major contribution of the increase is uh, from the uh, wild fish. So if uh, this trend, the current status of uh, total mortality will uh, continue, and the current trend and uh, all the current level of wild recruitment will continue, we expect the total biomass of Lake Chow will continue increase. Total harvest, including lake-wide, including both commercial harvest and the recreational harvest, has been relatively stable since the middle 1990s. This is uh, consistent with a relatively stable uh, stock biomass, also reflect the adequate the regulation of the fisheries. Of course, uh, the sea lampe decline in sea lampe wounding rate and uh, stay in a relatively low level is essential for the stable uh, uh, population biomass and the fishery harvest. Uh -huh. These slides compare the total harvest with the spawning stock biomass. The point is, since 2005, the total mortality is um, not the major fac factor influence the population abundance. Growth, major change in growth and the condition indices mostly due to the major change in the food web. From the 
the presentation of Dr. Rosman, you, you may recall the largest uh, decline in alewife and the rainbow smell abundance uh, is in the middle 1990s. Lake Chow followed the response uh, that uh, decline by decrease uh, and. Uh, by decreasing the growth potential of body lens, but maintain relatively stable body condition until the collapse of air wife. We have concluded that if one of the two major indices fall below previous level for more than two years, that may indicate the system will no uh, go back to the previous uh, status. In that regard, you can see the most recent two years, the body condition further below to the uh, previous level. That reflects the recent two consecutive uh, cold spring and the further decline in rainbow smell biomass particularly adults rainbow smell biomass. If we push further to consider this, uh, my understanding is uh, not about the full supply of lake chop, based on what we have learned in the past, uh, uh, more than uh, 10 years in the past. It's uh, still mostly about the recruitment of lake chop. The lake trout recruitment before they reach about 400 millimeter, that transition between invertebrate feeding to the fish uh, feeding rely on H0 and H1 pelagic prey species. So. This slide shows more detail about the recent population is uh, balanced uh, by the decrease uh, in hatchery recruitment and the increase in well recruitment. As you can see, the 87 CPUE per million stocking decrease since the 2002 year classes. That's a 2003 stocking directly related to the recent uh, food web change. And meanwhile, you can uh, just right away, you see the lake-wide well recruitment. We know the relative abundance of well recruitment, but we don't know the absolute abundance of well recruitment. But we do know in the recent year, uh, Total stocking or yearling equivalent in the main basin is uh, between 1.5 to 2 million. So if we draw some comparison between hatchery recruitment and uh, recent well recruitment, we may get some uh, educate uh, guess of what's the absolute abundance of well recruitment. In this slide, uh, I use the lake chart less than 17 inch no less than 21 inch, because uh, each day point may just include AG3 and AG4, two year classes. If I use a uh, 21 inch, less than 21 inch, then previous year hatchery recruitment is uh, about three year classes uh, include uh, in each day point. But in recent year, that may include four or five year classes in each day point. I also choose to use the, the start from the 2004 uh, and uh, to listen. That be, that's uh, because uh, C 87 CPUE recruit declined since 2002 year classes. That's a uh, 2003 stocking yearly. So I may say that by 2004, the hatchery recruitment status, uh, the the Journal index was no influenced by the decline in the hatchery stockings, uh, post uh, the stocking survival yet. So from this comparison, you may see at least current well recruitment 
may be equivalent uh, to the 1.5 to 2 million stocking. This involved some assumption catchability of hatchery fish, juvenile, and the well year juvenile have a similar catchability to our fishing gear and the survey gear. That assumption may be a false assumption because we have the, uh, in Lake Huron Technical Committee, we believe the catchability of well fish may be much, much lower than hatchery recruitment. Mostly because of hatchery stocking is in near shore. Our spring survey is also close to the uh, uh, near shore water. And also, uh, uh, previous year, the uh, Jonah Lake Chow fit on uh, Rainbow Smell and the L Wife. But right now, they fit on uh, Gobi and the Rainbow Smell. But uh, before the, they can effectively fit on Adult Smell and uh, uh, Gobi, what they are feeding on is uh, we don't know much about yet. So all the previous uh, slides give us an uh, impression L Lake Huron Lake Chow may follow Lake Superior, become a self-sustaining. So it's, uh, uh, the overall status is well good. But from this uh, slides, you can see if we are only allowed to use one slice to show, it, uh, to show the survey basic index, and uh, draw a comparison among the four lakes. You may get some impression Lake Huron Lake Chow status is not that good. Continue decline, the survey CPUE continue decline since the mid 1990s and uh, to the recent. So if we satisfy with the interpretation, say, oh, overall fish uh, survey basis index, relative abundant index, decrease to the level comparable to the late 1970s. But major change is the increase in well fish. If that's all our conclusion, then, then that's it. But this interpretation is no compatible with the previous uh, slides uh, we showed relatively stable uh, fishery and the continued increase of well recruitment. And uh, the, also the implication for fishery management is uh, is that we may have to implement more restrictive uh, fishery regulation, even total mortality is not that high. So in the rest of my talk, I will uh, uh, focus on the change point analysis. The concept is that large variation or trend of increase and the decrease or decrease no necessarily uh, reflects any change point, but a change point may indicate, often indicate some structural change in the population. Statistically, I may identify up to five change point uh, with this time series. But the, the, that kind of detail will not give us a clear management implication. So just focus on one major, most important change point. That means the fishery harvest increase at 1996, and then relatively stable. Total service CPUE, you can see fluctu uh, fluctuation is very high, but uh, without a trend until the decline at uh, 2006. So when survey and the fishery indicate different direction, point out different direction of the population trend, we have two typical options. One is a disregard the survey as inadequate. 
Another one is uh, to conserve fishery harvest having some kind of pseudo stability. That means uh, the fishermen are capable to trace the population, maintain relative high CPUE and the total harvest. Both options, both interpretation will give us, uh, say, we are facing hard decision to make. Here I provide alternative uh, analysis of the survey trend. One uh, major one uh, is uh, to separate juvenile lake chow and the adult lake chow. If you can remember for Lake, uh, lake Michigan and the Lake Huron, we use graded uh, mesh from two to six inch and a half inch increment. And uh, Lake Superior is using large mesh size, uh, uniting. And uh, Lake Ontario is using full survey as a fishery independent index. Another one is uh, try to find uh, uh, consistency among multiple time series. This is uh, adult CPUE. You can see it increase at 1996. This is uh, consistent with the increase in fishery harvest and then decline at 2009. So instead, rather than to s talking about continued uh, decrease, long-term decline, it's a two-step. The first one is an increase in abundance, a decrease in mortality. And then the most recent one we can talk about is the decline in 87 CPUE per recruit, it's a uh, since 2002 year classes. So if uh, the recruitment is at 87, then match exactly 2002 year, year class uh, decline to uh, then lead to the decline in 2009 uh, relative abundance index. Also, the increase in 87 CPUE per recruit is at 1998, two years late than the increase in adult re relative abundance. That's because uh, maybe uh, late child at 85 already uh, larger than 21 inch in the early year. So we can identify two change points here. One is the adult mortality decrease since 1996, and the adult CPUE increase. This is uh, consistent with our funding with uh, 87 CPUE per recruit. If you uh, consider the two-year delay in uh, recruitment to the adult size. Now, hatchery recruitment decreased since the 2002 year classes. That's also consistent with the decline in adult CPUE at 2009. Just to emphasize, this slide showed, just to emphasize the, the decline in 87 CPUE per recruit. It's uh, since 2002 year classes. But this slide shows the juvenile CPUE that's a uh, lake child less than 21 inch per thousand feet declined since 2001. That declined dramatically. That explains the long term trend when we combine all the juvenile lake child and the adult lake child together. Now you can see uh, since uh, 19, ni mid or 1990s to the recent continued decline in uh, survey CPUE. But is that the magnitude of decline reflect the true changes in uh, abundance? That's the question. Here is my consideration. I can say that decline is one more change upon reflect some major change in catchability of juvenile. 
there is there was no connection to decline in eighty seven CPUE per recruit. Jonas uh, CPUE include the fish age up to eighty five or uh, even eighty six. Then after two more years, that will be one or two years, those fish will be adult fish. So 2002 year uh, uh, decline in CPUE, uh, 2002 year class CPUE per recruit decline. It, we cannot just uh, connect the 2001 Jonah CPUE decline. It's no comparable with the uh, uh, stable adult CPUE and also no compatible with a relatively stable fishery harvest. And uh, that should be just after one or two years, if June uh, CPUE declined, we should see the adult CPUE decline. Because uh, our car is a uh, 21 inch, less than 21 inch, and larger or equal than 21 inch. But actually, we see adult CPUE. We did not see the decline of adult CPUE until 2009. And also, the Jonah CPUE decline in 2001 is a 78 percentage. And the recent decline in adult CPUE at 2009 only 34 percentage. So we can use that decline uh, in Jonah CPUE to understand that if we combine Jonah lecture and the adult lecture together, we see a long-term trend of decline in survey CPUE. So management implication here. Overall, try to summarize all the information I organize here. I suggest to recognize the three major transitions. One is the source of recruitment, change from hatchery stocking to well recruitment. This transition is happening even with the continued uh, stocking, the current uh, uh, program. And uh, the transition, I, here I say potential major limiting factor. Actually, better word is the first limiting factor, change from the mortality to recruitment. If we identify three scenarios, one is uh, mortality is very high, Another is a, a variation of recruitment is very high. And the third one is a recruitment often below, periodically below the certain level. Those three scenarios all require different uh, harvest policy. And uh, the third uh, transition is uh, the management scenario. We use it to manage uh, the fishery in relatively stable environment, very close to some equilibrium status. And uh, another, what we are facing now is a uh, continued change in the ecosystem and the food web. And uh, most recently, one thing is uh, the loss of near shore habitat may have contributed to the delay in age at recruitment. May substantially delayed the well recruitment. That's all I have.